Greetings folks, Rod Machado here. Welcome to another one of my educational videos. I sure hope you like it. Please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I sure would appreciate it. The Crab Method. It's not nebulous. It's time to get crabby. And that's not a matter of attitude either. Once you've determined the direction of airplane drift, apply a crabbing angle into the wind to compensate for this drift. This requires that you make a coordinated turn into the wind and roll out into wings level flight with the nose, the longitudinal axis, pointed at some angle into the wind to compensate for the drift. This angle is known as your wind correction angle, or WCA. On final approach, your airspeed should be stabilized at 1.3 times VS. Please remember that you modify the wind correction angle by making small coordinated turns using rudder and aileron inputs and not by use of rudder input alone, except in one instance. What's that one instance, you ask? Well, the crabbing method of crosswind correction requires that you hold the crab angle throughout the landing roundout and flare, then kick out or eliminate the crab just prior to touching down aligning the longitudinal axis of the airplane with the runway centerline. This is a crab kick, which is not to be confused with a crab cake. One is to eat, the other is done with your feet. Your sole objective with this maneuver is to avoid placing excessive side loads on the main landing gear. And you do this by pressing on the rudder and not by making a coordinated turn. You are way too close to the runway to be making turns. Besides, the airplane is just about to touch down. Attempting to turn and align yourself with the runway centerline might allow the crosswind to displace your airplane from the center of the runway. Instead, just as you're ready to touch down at the end of the landing flare, apply sufficient rudder to align the nose with the runway and use whatever opposite aileron is necessary to keep the wings level. It turns out that applying rudder usually induces a turn unless this is corrected by input of opposite aileron. Correct execution of the crabbing method of crosswind landings requires good timing on your part. It's not as easy to do as the wing low method, which is coming up next. Consider that during the landing round out and flare, the airplane's airspeed is decreasing. Since the airplane is crabbed into the wind at some angle, there's a sideways component of the airplane's speed that is neutralizing the wind's crosswind component. As the airplane slows down during the flare, that sideways component of movement decreases as the airspeed decreases, but the wind's crosswind component essentially remains the same. If you don't touch down immediately after removing the crab angle, you'll begin to drift. If that happens, you'll add a sideways component of force to the landing gear upon touchdown, which, for reasons I already stated, is something you want to avoid. Technically speaking, if you stretch out the landing flare either because your approach speed is too high or because you are attempting a soft field landing, you'll also have to increase the crab angle during the landing flare. It's true that an experienced pilot can turn slightly into the wind to increase the crab angle while he or she is actually in the landing flare, but this does take considerable practice to accomplish. Let me explain. Let's suppose that you're in a right crab and have begun the round out at too high an airspeed, say 1.4 times VS1 instead of 1.3 times VS1 as is recommended. As you round out in flare, you have to dissipate that extra airspeed. Therefore, you'll need to increase the crab angle as you do this. So, the way to induce a slight turn into the wind during the round out and flare is by applying rudder pressure in the direction of crab. What this does is accelerates the outside or the downwind wing, increasing its speed, thereby causing it to rise slightly and turn the airplane. In this instance, you don't want to hold the wings level with the ailerons. You want the wings to rise slightly and turn, but you don't want it to rise too much, perhaps five degrees or less. So, you'll use your ailerons to keep the bank extremely shallow. Now, just before the airplane is ready to touch down, you apply rudder pressure to align it with the runway centerline, and then apply ailerons to keep the wings level. 
For instance, if you're in a right crab angle just before you touch down, apply left rudder and a lot of it too since the airplane is very slow, and add sufficient right aileron to keep those wings level. Now does that sound challenging? Well, that's because it is. It can even be challenging for experienced pilots, but it's a perfectly acceptable way to handle a crosswind. While I certainly introduce the crab method to my students, I actually prefer that they use what is called the wing low method of crosswind correction. So what's the lowdown on the wing low method? Well, let's find out in the next video.